Well, we have a whole bunch of parts in front of us right now. Let's see if we can't put it all together and make us an automatic bandsaw blade sharpener. I will do my best to explain each part as we go along with the sizes, dimensions, where I've got them, or anything else. If I forget anything or you have questions about it, please just leave a message in a comment and I'll get back with you. Let's get started. Get all these pieces out of the way. start with the base here. Uh, the base is just some scrap metal I had sitting around. Um, the dimensions of it are 16 by 9. It's 16 gauge or 50 thousandths. Uh, I had some scrap one inch angle laying around. I just cut some 16 inch pieces and as you see tack welded on the bottom. Get it up off the ground, stiffen it up a little bit. So the next thing we need to do is get our bandsaw blade guide rails in place. This is what they are. They are uh, seven three quarter inches long, three quarters of an inch wide, and again, that was just a, a piece of angle I had laying around, I cut it off with the plasma cutter. I made these on them. Let's get this installed on here. We want to bring it up to the edge. Almost to the end over here. I probably got it, oh I don't know, eighth inch away. I got two 5 16ths of washers I'm going to set in here, use it as a spacer. This is your cheap chainsaw sharpener. You can buy them on Amazon, eBay, you can go to Harbor Freight. They're like $40. I've taken it apart right here at the hinge. There's a pin and a spring. Uh, don't need a spring. Now there is a lip here on the back. Let's see if I can get you guys to see it. it. Comes down and over and up. I have removed that. That will get in the way of its pivoting function. I just took a little hacksaw and cut it out. But let's get that mounted. The hinge or the bracket we're going to use for it is just some two inch angle, eighth inch thick. It's three inches long. Like I said, it's two inch angle. And this piece here is nothing more than one of these ears cut off. I've drilled a hole in the top, slide a bolt through, and that will give us our pivoting function that we will need later. This is a spacer I made right here. This is out of half inch stock, square stock. I don't know where I got it. It's, I just have it laying around. And what that will do is that will fit right in here. 
and give us a place for our pin to go through and this to pivot on. So let's get that pins together and weld it in place. I'm going to snub this down so it don't flop around on me. Take this in here. Here's the pin that you'll get. And everybody says, well, how do you line anything up? Well, it's not that difficult. What you're going to do is you're going to bring it over. You can take the center line of the motor and line it up with the center line of your guide. I'd say somewhere in there about right. Get it centered. We're going to square it up along the back. We call that good. this installed the next thing we got to do is we got to get a little lifting arm here's the mounts for the lifting arm again this is the two inch angle it's an inch wide I've drilled a couple three eighths holes in it this one has a shorter perch on it and the shorter perch is because it's going to go close to our guide over here that thing together. It's good before we do that. The dimensions on this thing are from the end to the very end. Let's see if I can show this. It's right around seven and a half inches. The width of it is two and three quarters. The width here is three and a quarter. Now I have welded a quarter inch washer on there, and that quarter inch washer will ride right here where the rod, and it allows it not to fall off or slide or move. These two pieces are just some eighth inch I had laying around. I probably cut it out of that piece of angle with a three eighths hole drilled in it. Uh, these things are inch and a half long, half inch wide. And again, you'll see what that's going to be used for here in a minute. Get that put together. Get a nut on here. Get that up under. Try to get this straight. I'm getting this parallel with the outside edge. Some reason it don't want to stay. I call that pretty good. Maybe there. Let's get that put in place. Uh 
now we have a method of lifting our motor up, something our cam can follow. Here's the two bearings work I'm going to use. These are just two little, well, I don't even know what size they are. 3 8 bolt fits them pretty good. The number on the bearing is 6900Z. They're really inexpensive. You can pick them up on Amazon. I think I get them in packs of 10 for like $8. Two bearings in, put a bolt in, grab a nut. And that's good enough for now. There's this nice bearing area to ride on. <coughs> Our little motor stand here. Again, this is just that same 16 gauge. Uh, I cut it out, dimensions on it. Four and five eighths, five and a half. Oh, that's two and three eighths. Uh, dimensions back here aren't too important. You just need something solid to hold the motor in place. Uh, I've, because this stuff is not the strongest in the world, I've taken some quarter inch rod and stiffened it up. The important thing is, is your center line. The center line from there to there is four and a half inches and that's going to be to accommodate the height of the wheel to the height of this. You don't want your wheel way down here and it don't have no where to travel, no room to travel. And then again up here, same deal, you know, you have it way too tall. That's just a good midpoint. So you get this made, suppose we can get the motor installed. Here's the motor. Right here, it's a Gearson 12 volt 15 RPM motor. Um, you can see in my hand they're pretty small, but it seems to have plenty of power to do the what we're doing. Um, got this on Amazon. They're like I don't know, 15 dollars or so. Let's get this thing mounted up in here. Grab our wheel that we're going to make our cam out of. Not rocket science. It's just a piece of masonite I cut out. Six inch hole saw. Gave me a centering point. After it's cut out, it is, I don't know, five and three quarters round. You are going to have to get these. This is the mounting flange that goes with the motor. This has a six millimeter shaft on it. This is a six millimeter mounting flange. And it was just centered on there put in. Now this here, the hole that we have, that is going to give us, depending upon how far away or how close to the center, will give us our travel to push our bandsaw blade. Most bandsaw blades have a 7 8 two spacing, one inch, inch and eighth. They're all over the place. Everybody has their own favor. This you want right around I don't know if I can show you that too well or not. Um, that is three quarters of an inch center to center. And you want it to be pretty much right there. Maybe a little longer, maybe a little shorter. It depends on your two spacing, but three quarters of an inch on here gives me an inch and a half travel down there. So that should work out pretty good. This is just a three eighths bolt we're going to put through here. Now, I have ground the back side of this so it will clear the mounting flange. This is another piece of that half inch stock. It's just a spacer used to get me off the threads. And then up. And we're going to snug that down. pretty tight. You don't want it moving. You don't want no play in it. You have that there. This will just slide on your shaft. Grab a clamp. That will hold that down. Now that we got our cam wheel on and our pusher, we need a rod to go between here and there. An adjustable rod. 
and I've made this. This is eighth inch stock. It's half inch wide from the end of the teeth, eight and a half inches. Overall length is almost eleven. Distance in between here is two and an eighth. This is one part. Here's another part of it. This here is the block that's going to sit on here. It's, going to, it's allowed to rotate. This is just cut out of some half inch stock I had laying around. If you look, it, it kind of almost fits in there like it used to be there. Uh, this thing's 5 eighths of an inch wide, inch long half inch wide. If this 3 8 hole allows it to go over to the 3 8 bolt. This here runs all the way through. It is threaded for a quarter inch rod, all thread. And I will show you how this all goes together and why it is the way it is. This is my quarter inch all thread. I had these little nuts. Uh, it's just red loctited on. I've already set the distance on this. This has red light. To, this is a spring. So when you put this thing together and you're tightening it, it creates a certain amount of tension on that rod so it don't come loose. It'll stay in whatever position we determine we want it at and it'll stay there. Get this thing threaded in here. To just about the halfway point. Push it through, put a nut on it, and there you have it. And this will go on here. Now, if we move this this way, pushes the rod that way. We back this off, pulls the rod back this way. And we'll have a nut here, we'll put on, and that should pretty much get us to about where we need to be. I'd say right now, I'd say we're pretty much close enough to get a band out, start making, showing you how to do this cam wheel. Not the hardest thing in the world. It just requires a little bit of patience, I guess I'd say. Let me grab a band and we'll get started. Ah, forgot one thing. Before we get started, this here is just a little piece of quarter inch rod. And we're gonna take and weld it right here in the corner. And I will tell you why and show you why here in a minute. Let me get this thing tacked into place. Don't burn the shit out of my fingers. And that's all that's needed for that. Let me grab a band. There we go, we got a band. Get this up out of the way. Those spacers we had in previous, we no longer need. Straighten it out, slide it in. We got the band. Uh, let's get this out of our way. Back you up a little bit here, let you see everything. I just have it sitting on some of these scrap pieces of metal as a spacer. There's nothing too special about it. I'm going to get you back in the focus again. I think I now got it set up to the point to where you can see everything I'm doing. And it'll be much easier to explain from this point. Well, let's get this thing set up so we can mark that cam and get it ground out. Okay. 
take this off and get it out of our way. Loosen this up. Slide it back out of our way. Get the bearings out. We're going to put a little bolt in that won't protrude through the back side with a nut. There's a reason for it. It's going to create a flat spot for a pencil to be taped to. Slide that up. And a little flat spot right there. Alright, now let's get this thing moved over. Uh, let's put the pencil on first. Tape. And I made me a little itty bitty pencil to sharpen it up on the grinder. Right here, and I'm going to let it stick out the back side about an eighth of an inch. That should be good to hold our pencil in place. This over to me. What you want to do is you want to line this center point up with a center point, which is somewhere in there. Just tighten down. And what I'm doing is I got this block a half inch, I'm laying on the back, and I'm going to slide this other clamp onto it, because we do not want that to move once we start marking it. <clears throat> that seems pretty sturdy. Now, we move this thing all forward a little bit. We're going to put three spacers on there. I'm going to put a wheel on, or adjustment rod, sorry, on there. Put a nut on it. Yeah. Let's see. I can just peel this back. There we go. Get our little pencil out of the way. And now we're going to set our gap. Put a little pressure on it as if the machine was working itself. Rotate the wheel around. Let it make a full stroke. And I don't know if you can see it, but right here there is a gap. So we need to move it back. Make a full rotation. We just want that wheel just to touch it. And it's touching too much. So we go back the other way a little bit. And we do it again. This will take a few times. And right there. Just misses it. Alright. Now that it just misses it, that is our set. Now we have to come all the way back around. And right here where it touches and just begins to push. 
that's going to be right here is our maximum down meaning I shouldn't say maximum down but the beginning of the cut so let's get our little pencil in here so I can do this get it up against the wheel we're gonna put a little bit of down pressure on this here and actually I'm gonna hold that pencil too and we're going to rotate this thing through and you watch it follows the tooth and as it follows the tooth we're going to get to the highest point right there and I'm using both fingers to hold it so once we go past that point right there that's its highest point so our cam profile is between this line and this line from here to there is going to be our profile coming into the cut and from here to here is going to be our profile coming out of the cut into its highest point when its highest point is going to be up here so we're going to take this and we're just going well you know what let's see here let's get rid of our pencil because we are not done with it let's take this off and we'll draw some pretty lines I got this thing here. And I'm going to squeeze it. Something like that. And I'll do the same over here. Now, if you hold on a second, I am going to take this and we are going to go cut it out. I am going to take it over to the grinder, it's a belt sander, and I am going to take and grind. Now that we're back from the grinding wheel, I got that roughed in. Remember, we're concerned about from here to here. This is just the entrance how smooth it comes in and from here out is its exit point let's get it put together and we'll fine tune it let's get rid of this get our bearing back in there And we'll get everything scooted forward to where it should be. Let's get our pusher rod on. Get the nut on it. Now let's see how close we are. Whoa, kick the camera. Good deal above. We're going to move this up. I'm just going to watch it.
Looking at the gap between the wheel, it should be consistent all the way across. See how we have a much larger gap there, larger, and it's going up. But right here, we're about right. And we're up. We're moving. We're coming down into the cut just about there so let's bring that down to where it touches so let's say it's about there and we can see from that point all the way across we need to take some more out to there we're good right here we come over here and we look at our wheel that is where we're good to let me bring it back out where you can see both of them so what I was talking about is from right in here to right here we need to remove some of this material so let's go remove some of it and then we'll come back over here and we'll check just to see how we're doing. I know it don't look like I've removed much, but I didn't. We'll put it back together and see how it works. And this is the process. Nothing happens quick. It's nothing good. Alrighty. Now, from this mark here to that mark here, I've ground some of this away in here. So let's rotate this back around. And we will bring you back over and we will see just how well we did is I can I did see how we're coming up 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 and we're at the top let's do that again down let me back you guys up so you guys can see both of them and let me get a pointer. My arms aren't low enough. But from right here, see how we have that little lip? If you look right here, you can see it's much thicker. So we need to grind that off to there. To right there. And from there, all the way over to here we need to remove some more so that's what we're going to do so now that we did some more of that lift it back up put it back on try it all over again what we're doing is we're sneaking up on it. Easy to take material away, hard to put it back on. So we're going to move you back up over here. Grab 
grab the pencil. And I'm looking at that gap. That gap seems to be pretty even all the way across. Let's take a look at it again. Okay, we're down. We're going down. Alright. I think what I'm doing is I am marking the wheel from there. Okay, what I have done is I've marked on the wheel from here over to here. This seems to be pretty close. This seems to be pretty close, but we're still a little heavy in here. So I'm going to go take some of all this out. And I'll be right back. And I'm back with this. Try it again. Right here we came off. All the way over. So from here to there, we need to take some more off. Back and forth we go. And we're just dialing this in a little bit at a time. And we're back again. So guys, this is just a patience thing. It's not difficult to do. It's just time consuming. And everybody in the world never has time anymore. I would say we are close enough we are going to give that a try running it. Let me get the back of the motor set up, move you guys up top, and we will give it a whirl. Alright, I got the motor on. I shouldn't say on, I should say wired. Uh, I run it with this little 110 to 12 volt AC adapter. I don't know if you can see this, but it is a 2 amp. Don't require much to run these motors. Get this on Amazon. Again, I think all I do is buy on Amazon, which is probably true. It'll come with this adapter. The adapter plugs in, and you can just screw your wires in. I did weld the motor down, made it permanent can't move and let's get it started let's see what it's gonna do let's see how well we did how close we are I'm gonna get you down here on the floor and let you see what we're doing all right I got you on the floor I got you all set up wheel down motor here let's plug in our cam let's get it going first See how that's working. Lighten it up a little bit. I would say that's not too bad. I 
say that get you back out at the wood pile. All right. All right, guys, there it is. My version of a automatic bandsaw sharpener. Uh, just a bunch of scrap metal put together. It works. You know, this is the way I did it. If you guys are doing it and you want to make improvements, by all means, have at it. Use whatever you got. I've seen guys use wiper motors. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things that I got hit up with a lot of questions on how to build one of these and it's really hard to explain and most of the questions were about the cam wheel the cam wheel is going to depend upon the blade that you have all blades have different profiles so if I take this out and I put a turbo 7 in or something like that it's not going to grind that profile exactly because the profile is different it would require a different cam you know if you're like me you got 15 20 of these blades sitting around they you know they get dull you got to go out and get a couple new blades you know i bet you all these parts here laying on the table there's less than you know a hundred dollars worth of stuff here to go buy you know so the for the price of five six blades you can make one and resharpen them you know i got a couple bands that you know I've used sharpened five six times yeah you don't get too much more than that I think it's because you know the heat treat the tips of these and after you sharpen them a few times you get through that heat treatment you know they'll sharpen up but they dull really fast uh, as far as how sharp they are uh, they're pretty sharp I won't say they're as good as a new blade but they're pretty close all right, guys, if you have any questions, comments, you know, put them in the comments below. I'll try to get back with you in a timely manner. Uh, well, I guess that's it. You guys have a good day.